What's up you guys, I need Shmev here. So I often get asked a lot how I create these awesome animation videos. Well, it's a lot easier than you think. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over step by step on how you could create your very first own animation video and have it ready to upload for YouTube or for whatever purpose you intend to use it for. So make sure to stay tuned. Starting out with the first step is the idea. So when you're making an animation video, you have to pick a topic. This topic could be one about finance, health, or education. Anything you want to get across to your audience, just make sure the message is delivered. Moving on to step number two is writing the script. Once you have picked out your topic that you want to talk about, it's time to move on to writing the script. You can follow this simple template called HICC, which stands for Hook, Intro, Content, and Call to Action. The hook should be like the first 30 seconds of your video. Finding a way how to grab your audience's attention, making sure that they don't click away. The intro should be a brief explanation of what you're going to be talking about throughout the video, but remember to keep it short. The content is the meat and potatoes of your video. This is the main part of your topic. This is where you actually deliver a message. Finally, the call to action. This is where you tell your viewers to like, comment, and subscribe. Also to follow you on social media. You could also tell them to watch another one of your videos. Moving on to step number three is recording. So once you're done writing your scripts, now it's time to record the voiceovers. I use the Blue Yeti microphone to record all my voiceovers. So this is pretty much my setup. On screen I have my scripts. And then on the right side I have my computer to do all the recording. The software that I use is Filmora 9 to record all my voices. You could also use Audacity, which is a free software for PC or Windows. Moving on to step number 4 is animation. The animation software that I use is called VideoScribe. There are different pricing options, so be sure to pick the best one that fits your needs. Okay, so once you have VideoScribe open, go to the top left corner where it says create a new scribe. So now we're going to want to import our voiceover that we created earlier. In order to do that, we go in the top right corner where you see your microphone icon. And then we're going to head on down to the bottom left corner where you see the upload button. Once you click on the button, make sure to click on the file where you have your voiceover. Once you select your file, you'll be able to hear it on video scrap by hitting the play button. Once you are done, make sure to hit the check mark button. Another awesome feature that VideoScribe has is that you can also record inside the program itself. So there will be no need to use any external software. But I still tend to find it more easier to use external software to do voiceovers. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the animation part, which is a lot simpler than you think. Just go to the bottom right corner where you see the image button. You click on it and it opens up a library of images you can use. So for now, I'm going to show you how to do something real simple. So I'm just going to click on this image right here. So once you click on the image, you can click on this little blue arrow that you see down here. Once you click on it, it opens up a trail of functions for the animation. You can control how long you want the animation to go, along with how long you want the image to stay in place. You can also click on the bottom left icon to open up more advanced options. These advanced options allow you to control how you want the animation process to go. Whether you want it to be drawn in or you want them to move in. Just play around with it. Okay, so I'm going to add another image to finish up this simple project. I am not going to get into too much detail on how to use VideoScribe. But if you want to see a video on how to use VideoScribe, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, when you're satisfied with your project, you can go in the top right corner to click on the share button. Once you click on the share button, you can go down where you see the download button. Next up is step number 5, upload to YouTube. If you haven't already created a YouTube account, make sure to create one. So once you're in YouTube Studio, go to the create icon. Select the animation video that you just made. Once you get up to this part, make sure to fill in all the details. That's including the title, description, thumbnail, which I'll show you how to make in a minute, and all the tags and anything else that I asked for. 
Everything's pretty much straightforward, so there's nothing complicated about this. When you click on next, the next part is going to be where you can add your end screens or play cards. Next up is going to check whether you have any copyright errors. Then after that, you got to choose whether to publish it, or you want it set into private, or you want to save it as draft. You could also schedule it to set it to premiere, where you and your viewers could watch it together. Moving on to step number 6 is YouTube thumbnail. I usually like to make the thumbnail while I'm still waiting for the YouTube video to upload, after completing all the details. So if you're going to head on over to canva.com, this is one of my favorite websites to make a YouTube thumbnail. So you can head on over to the search bar, and you can type in YouTube thumbnail. Once you hit enter, you will load to a page where there's a bunch of templates for YouTube thumbnails. But for now, you're going to click on apply template. So once you open up the template, you can do so much here. You can add text, you can add elements, you can add pictures. That's what I like about Canva. It's so easy to use. You can just click and drag things onto the canvas. You can change the background. It's so simple. It's nothing complicated. But again, I'm not going to get into too much details on how to use Canva. But if you want to see a video on how to use Canva, please let me know in the comments down below. So once you're satisfied with your thumbnail design, now it's time to download it. All you have to do is go on the top right corner and click on the share button. Once you click on the share button, just click on download. And that's it. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you did like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because each video is intended to motivate, inspire, or to teach you something new that could change your life. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And now it's time for me to tune out.